Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Aubrey and I am here once again bringing you your sign by sign forecasts. And these forecasts are for the week of July 5th through July 11th, 2021. And I am going to be just talking about how the energetics are likely to be affecting you based on the sign of your ascendant primarily. Also to a lesser extent, the sun and the moon are also relevant and important when you're checking this forecast to give you another dimension of how these energetics will be affecting you. So make sure you check your ascendant sign first and then your sun and your moon for just more clarity in terms of different aspects of how your life will be being affected by these energetics this week. And Overall, we have another very interesting week coming. We are still very much carrying over the um, frustrations and the tensions and the emotionally impulsive nature of the energetics that we experienced last week with our big climax week of the year. We had the T-square with Saturn, Uranus, and Mars really heating things up and bringing a lot of like conflict and contention and just really dynamic and explosive energetics functioning and activating in various areas of our life. And again, I made a sign by sign forecast for last week. So you might want to check that one out again for this week because those energetics of that T square are still, like I said, very much in effect. And this has a lot to do, even though um, Mars has moved out of opposition with Saturn and out of square with Uranus for this week, especially as we get towards the end of the week, we actually have Venus now moving in who is in Leo moving into position to second that opposition and square to Uranus and Saturn that Mars had just completed. So there could be some relationship and financial conflicts this week for sure. Venus rules relationships, finances, what gives us comfort, security, peace and harmony. So partnerships, relationships, financial contracts and, um, relationships with other people regarding finances, all of these things may experience some type of conflict or frustration or really um, impulsive like actions in regards to these partnerships, romance, romantic relationships, just all types of partnerships and relationships, and especially in regards to finance going on this week. So this T-square is definitely being reactivated by Venus's move into Leo through Leo this week, and she's actually coming into a conjunction with Mars. And so in some area of our life this week, we are definitely going to be feeling passionate and inspired about something. And for these sign-by-sign -sign videos, I, again, am going to address the positioning of Saturn. Saturn, Mars, and Uranus, but this week I'm also going to talk about how Venus is joining Mars in the sign of Leo and how that might be affecting us. And also we have a new moon in Cancer this week, you guys, which means that we are ending the eclipse season for now. We're starting a whole new vibration for the new moon, and this one has a lot to do with nurturing, taking care of, and really the mothering vibe and the mothering archetype. And with this new moon this month, and for the sign by sign forecast, I'm going to be taking a look at where the new moon in Cancer is happening for each of us, depending on our sign. And this is going to um, show us what we need to be nurturing, what we need to be caring for right now, what we need to be cultivating, and where we need to be sort of embodying that mother archetype, you know, regardless if we're a man or a woman. But we can all sort of, we need to be embodying, embodying this mothering archetype in some area of our life because this is actually going to help us this week and throughout this new moon cycle in terms of where Uranus is shaking things up for us and trying to get us to make these really big changes to break free from something in some area of our life. So, the new moon in Cancer is going to be playing an assisting role this month in whatever Uranus is doing for us in each and every one of our individual charts. So that is another thing that I'm going to be looking at with this forecast this week. So without further ado, let me get started. And we are going to start with the sign of Aries because it is the first sign of the Zodiac. So for Aries, you guys right now have Uranus transiting your second house in Taurus. You have Mars and Venus coming to conjoin Mars in the fifth house of Leo. And you have Saturn retrograding in your 11th house of 
networks, friend groups, social groups, organizations, all of those type of things. And the new moon for you will be occurring in your fourth house of cancer. So for you guys, and as we know, you know, there's been something Saturn that has been asking you to really take a good look at and really reevaluate and reform the foundation of how you're doing life in regards to friend groups, associations, the organizations that you're a part of, and how you sort of define yourself in terms of the people that you choose to associate with. You guys have been experiencing frustrations or feeling held back or stifled or um, obstructed in some way by this area of life in terms of these friends groups, in terms of these organizations that you associate yourself with, these social networks, these... Um, groups of people who you choose to participate in and you choose to be a part of, something about that Saturn wants you to reform the foundation of your relationship to how you relate and how you choose to relate to other groups of people. And for you guys right now, You've been having some major shakeups in the second house of finances, a lot of big changes in regards to money and financial situations, possibly your home or how you make money or your material comforts, your resources, um, and also in terms of your perception to your own internal value, your own self-worth, your own self-love. Uranus is trying to really liberate you and to bring you back into originality and authenticity in terms of how you're making money and how you are valuing yourself. And this is an energetic, again, that's been carrying over from that T-square. And you also have right now the um, Venus coming to conjoin Mars in your fifth house. So for you guys, you're really going to be feeling quite passionate and inspired and motivated this week and um, throughout the course of this month to really like find your enjoyment in life and your personal self-expression, your personal creative self-expression, your enthusiasm, your optimism, just what brings you pleasure, what brings you joy. You guys are really just wanting to have fun in the month of July. You're wanting to be creative. You're wanting to express yourself. You're wanting to just truly be free to experience the joy of life. And you're feeling quite inspired and um, passionate about doing so this month with Mars and Venus conjoining in your fifth house. So let's talk about what you guys, Aries, need to focus on, put care, put nurturing towards, and really um, sort of mother over this next month, which will help you with these financial changes, with these shakeups that are going on in your second house. And this is because for the new moon in Cancer, it is in a sextile to Mars or to Uranus and Taurus. And so the new moon in Cancer, the sign of the moon, the sign of the mother, what we are putting that energy into caring for and nurturing this month is going to assist and help Uranus in making these changes to your financial life, to realigning you with your own authentic personal interpretation of your own value and how that manifests in terms of the comfort, security, and financial situations in your life. So for you guys, this is happening in the fourth house. And the fourth house rules the home, the family, the roots, and actually the mother and your own mothering, your own motherhood, um, and the parents and where we come from. So for you guys, Making intentions to improve your relationships with your family, to improve relationships with your children, to really strengthen your own ability to be a mother or your relationship with your mother, and um, really just taking care of and nurturing your family or your home environment or your children or your roots or your own parents or really caring for the, the people and the environment from which you come and you know, putting a lot of energy and nurturing and time and focus into that is going to help you somehow over the course of this month with these shakeups that are going on in terms of your finances, your comfort and security, your resources, and um, your personal sense of self-worth and self-value. For you, Aries, really focusing, putting nurturing time and care into your home environment, your family situation, your roots, and really just cultivating that and trying to create an atmosphere that makes you feel more comfortable 
this somehow is going to help you with these shifts and changes that are going on in the second house and also that will then extrapolate into the other dynamics being affected by the t-square and that is the 11th house the friend groups that you're being asked to redefine your foundation in terms of who you want to associate with and also it will somehow um assist in your ability to experience this open-hearted joy which is really what you're after right now this month so that's what i have for you guys aries you really want to put your focus on your home your mothering your parenting and um really just taking care of children and your family and your home environment and um the environment from which you come putting care and nurturing and energy into that will help you guys over the course of this month. That's what I have for Aries. All right, let's move on and talk about what I have for Taurus, Taurus Ascendants, Sun, Moon, and Taurus. So for you guys, you have had Saturn retrograding in your 10th house, and so that means that you we know that you've been feeling obstructed or held back by or limited by authority in some way or another. Now, this could be in terms of bosses, it could be your career, it could be um, your public image, your reputation, but something about your relationship to either authority figures or how you present yourself as some type of authority has been being limited, held back, and like obstructed, obstructing your progress in some type of way. And this is because Saturn right now really wants you to reform the foundation of how this area of your life is operating. It wants you to reform the foundation of your relationship to your own inner authority and to the authority figures in your life into your own interpretation of what you contribute to the public as well as your the public's view of you, your public image, your reputation. It really wants you to reform how you are publicly presenting yourself to the world in terms of your contributions and how you are an authority and how you relate with authority figures in your life. That is what is under construction for you guys, Taurus, right now, okay? Because Saturn wants to liberate you ultimately and help you build something that is much more fulfilling and long-term in the future in terms of this area of your life. For you guys, you have also had Uranus, your, your ascendance in Taurus, your Taurus. So you've had Uranus transiting your first house. So we know that this also is about major shakeups and changes going on in regards to how you're presenting yourself to the world. Taurus, you guys are really right now making big efforts to really be more authentic in the way that you're presenting yourself to the world and your personal presence and your personal appearance, your personal image, how you're interacting with other people based on how they're perceiving you and you're really trying to realign it with what authentically you feel you are instead of what other people's perceptions of you are. You're really trying to come into your own and present yourself for who you really are and this is causing major shakeups, major changes going on with you personally. Now for this T-square you've also had Mars transiting your fourth house and now we have Venus and Mars coming to a conjunction in your fourth house. So you guys are feeling very passionate, inspired, and motivated in regards to your home or your family or your motherhood or your own mother, your own parents and your roots, where you come from. You are you have a lot of energy, um, a lot of creative inspiration to um, really put energy into these areas of your life. So with the fourth house highlighted for you guys, there really is just this major emphasis on this creative and passionate and loving energy in regards to what is going on with your motherhood, with your parenting, with your home environment, with the place that you came from, with the people associated with your childhood and your roots and, um, your community and where 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 you came from. This is um, highlighted this month with Venus and Mars coming to conjunction in the fourth house, and they're also you also might experience some type of conflict in regards to relationships having to do with your family, like close inner family dynamics this month at, or this week moving into this month as well. As Venus is squaring Uranus, that's relationship issues might be. Um, tension or friction and this might have to do with relationships regarding your family or um, 
your roots, your home environment somehow. Now for you guys, Taurus, you have the new moon in Cancer coming into your third house. So this means that the emphasis and what you're putting care and nurturing into this month should be focused around things that you're learning actually and information that's coming to you and conversations that you're having with people, your communications. Um, but generally I would think that you guys, Cancers would, or Taurus would really benefit this month from putting, um, in setting intentions to gain knowledge, to gain insight, to learn new things, to gain information and to communicate that information with other people. With the new moon happening for you in Cancer in the third house, this is very much about taking care and nurturing your ability to learn and to grow on like an informational level. You guys need to gain new information, new perspectives, new ideas this month, this new moon cycle. And that will actually help you a lot in terms of these personal changes, these personal shakeups that are happening to your own identity, to your own like personal appearance, to your own way that you project your personality and your personal vibration. You're going to be gaining new information. You're going to be learning something new. And you guys really this month should just be jumping all into that information, immersing yourself in whatever information that you feel called to or drawn to because you're going to be learning something or hearing something. You're going to be getting new information or new communications or new ideas this month that really assists you in this process of personal transformation back into authenticity that you guys are going through this month. And again, this will also help you with these career issues that you have going on or these issues with authority that you have going on, as well as the issues that you're facing in your really wanting to, you know, have a positive experience of motherhood, of family, of community of um, your home environment this month that may be under some type of pressure or conflict. So for you guys, the key this month, what you need to put your focus and energy into really has to do with learning, gaining information, gaining new ideas, and this will help you with all of the conflicts that you're facing and all of the changes that you're trying to make right now. So that is my video for Taurus. If you guys liked it, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and leave me comments. I love your comments. And tune into my videos every day for the astrology of the day. Thanks, Taurus. Bye. Okay, let's talk about Geminis. So for Geminis, you guys have had Saturn retrograding through your ninth house. We know that this has really been asking us to redo the foundation of how we're gaining wisdom, how we're gaining information, and our relationship to the way that we gain this information, to what we put our faith in, to what we put our trust in, to what we put our beliefs in, and to generally our... Um, understanding of the overall picture of things. Also foreign travel and interactions with people from like different countries and stuff like that. There may have been, there may be some type of pressures or restrictions going on in our ability to communicate somehow with people of more of like a long distance nature. But generally the way that I'm feeling these energetics for Geminis with Saturn transiting the ninth house, it's really about um, asking us to reform our foundation of what we, where we put, what we put our faith in, what we put our belief in, what we ultimately understand to be true and how we gain our wisdom and how we, what our relationship is to the overall nature of the universe really and the whole greater picture of things. That is really what has been asking us to, we've been asked, being asked to reconfigure how we are gaining wisdom and information, like I said, and we may have been experiencing some difficulties in terms of our ability to expand our belief systems, expand our um, perception of truth at this point in time. So for Geminis also, we have had Uranus transiting our 12th house, and this really has been creating shakeups and changes in terms of our unconscious mind, actually. And um, it may have been bringing some types of like awakenings or um, flashes of insights that have been coming through like dreams or, you know, just sort of meditative states and also maybe creating some sort of like impulses or desires to really just like let a lot of things go. Um, because that 12th house is the house of endings and losses and we may have like 
there may have been some things that we had to let go that we weren't expecting to, you know, be releasing at this period of time. So with Uranus transiting our 12th house, we're really ultimately being asked to come back into our own authenticity in terms of our spiritual connection, our relationship to spirit, and our relationship to our own unconscious. And um, this, the way that I see it actually has a lot to do also with Saturn retrograding in the ninth house because it's sort of like we're being asked to reform the way that we approach gaining wisdom, gaining overall understanding because it seems like Uranus in the 12th really wants us to reconnect to our own intuition, our own spiritual connection, our own spiritual insights, our own like internal compass and ability to... Um, perceive and understand and connect with information that is right for us and that is true for us and that is coming more through the spiritual realms, the unconscious realms with Uranus in the, the 12th house. So that is sort of the way that I've been perceiving the Saturn Uranus square for Gemini's. Now also for Gemini's, Mars and Venus, Mars has been transiting the third house and now Venus is coming to conjunct Mars in the third house. So we've been feeling, I'm also a Gemini ascendant, we've been feeling quite passionate, inspired and motivated in terms of talking to other people, communicating with other people, gaining information, gaining insight, gaining new perspective, sharing that insight and in perspective and understanding with others and really just um, speaking up and, and being more verbal. We've been feeling, there's been kind of like a fire that has been lit under us <laughs> since Mars moved into Leo. And now that we have Venus here for this new moon cycle, that's really just making us sort of passionate, inspired and creative in the way that we're communicating, understanding and gaining information, what we're learning right now and how we're sharing that information and insight with others. Now, this could also create um, right now with Venus coming into us into conjunction with Mars and squaring Uranus from the from the third house, there could be some type of conflicts that come about this week in terms of relationships in regards to this information that we're sharing. So we might, Geminis, want to be a little bit careful with, you know, how we're speaking, make sure that we're not being too overly aggressive or too assertive and that it's not coming from our ego in the way that we're speaking, communicating and sharing information this month because it could, there is a chance that the way that we're talking, the way that we're speaking, the way that we're communicating could create some type of conflicts and relationships for us because of that square with Venus to Uranus. So just something to keep in mind. But generally for us, Gemini, what we want to be focused on this month is where the new moon is and Cancer. And that is happening in our second house. So for Gemini's, putting intention and focusing on nurturing and giving care and energy into our how we're making our money, what we do to provide comfort for ourselves, our perception of our own internal value, our own self-worth, the love that we have for ourselves and how that manifests out into our um, external and physical comfort and security and um, the resources that we have access to and the luxury that and the enjoyment that we have in our lives and just our general ability to feel stable and secure and comfortable. These are the areas of life that we want to be focusing on and putting our energy into this month. So we really want to be focusing on work this month, Gemini. We want to be focusing on how we're making our money, really putting care, time, and attention into how we're making our money, how we, what projects we're working on, how we are building a financial situation for ourselves to bring comfort and stability to our lives. And by putting our energy and really nurturing and focusing on this area of our life, this actually should help us. And you know, it could go the other way too. We need to be, Geminis need to be very much paying attention to any intuition, any flashes of like flashes of knowing or flashes of inspiration or flashes of insight downloads that come to us just sort of out of the blue or through specifically dreams or through meditation or prayer. These things can really help us this month in terms of um, figuring out how we need to put that energy, put that nurturing, put that care into these areas of, of our life that help to build these financial situations. With Uranus in sextile to the new moon in the coming from the 12th house for Geminis and activating into that second house, there is actually spiritual assistance coming through that can help us to um, figure out the nature of the way that we need to nurture this area of our life to get the, the best benefit going forward. And again, this is really going to be um, something that 
is in alignment with our own authenticity and it's going to be something that feels very natural and very right and very good and it's really just an expression of what we truly are. That is the nature that Uranus wants us to build the foundation of our financial situations going forward. So for Geminis, that is really how these energetics are affecting us this month, and that is where we want to be putting our time and attention into our finances, the things that bring us um, financial security, and the projects that we're working on right now in order to grow, create, and um, have that in our lives. So that's what I have for Geminis. If you guys liked my video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave me comments, and tune in tomorrow for my astrological outlook of the day. Bye Geminis! Okay, so now let's talk about Cancer. So for you guys, Cancer, you guys have had Saturn retrograding through your eighth house, and this really has been asking you to go on a deep dive into your psyche, into your deep, interconnected, intertwined relationships with other people, the, like, deep subconscious programming that sort of draws you into these intertwined connections with other people, the financial interconnections and intertwinements that come about as a result of those. Saturn really is asking you to basically like rework the framework of your psyche so that you can live a much more um, balanced and liberated psychic experience going forward into your life that will um, create and manifest a much more balanced, healthy, and fulfilling ability to relate and to connect and to intertwine with other people going forward into the future of your life, okay? You've had Uranus transiting your 11th house. And with Uranus in the 11th house, this has been creating major shakeups, major um, just crazy changes that are happening in terms of your friend groups, your associations, your social networks, the organizations that you're a part of, and how you really identify yourself sort of in terms of the groups that you associate with and the people that you choose to be a part of and, and, and have in your experience. Um, some type of shakeups that have definitely been going on in terms of your friend groups, your associations, and those organizations that you associate with. Um, You've also had Mars transiting your second house, and now we have Venus coming to conjoin Mars in your second house. So you guys are going to be feeling quite passionate and inspired and motivated, actually, to be um, making money this month as uh, we go through this Cancer New Moon cycle. With the second house, you're gonna you're gonna be putting a lot of energy, and you're gonna have a lot of passion and a lot of creative inspiration to really work on new projects, to create new things, to create new avenues of. Um, benefiting your financial situation, your financial circumstances, opportunities coming to you that allow you to put your creative passion and your inspiration and your motivation and take action actually to sort of get to work on these areas of your life that are bringing you um, financial benefits or things that you're building, projects that you're working on that are in regards you know, to bringing you some type of material comfort, stability, resources, um, and also really making you feel better and strengthening sort of your own internal self-worth, your own internal like value, your self-love for yourself, and you're being very supported this month in terms of financial situations, financial circumstances. However, because Venus will be squaring Uranus from your second house, there may be some relationship conflicts, some partnership issues that arise as a result of the focus that you're putting into building situations that can benefit your finances this month. Some type of relationship or partnership conflict coming about sort of surprisingly because of whatever efforts you're putting into increasing benefiting your financial situation. So just something to be aware of. But for you guys, you really the new moon is happening in your first house. This is your month, Cancer. It's Cancer season right now. And as Cancers, this is your your new moon cycle. And so for you guys, having the new moon in your first house, really putting a lot of effort and emphasis on yourself, self-care, doing things for yourself, um, your physical body, your appearance, nurturing yourself, getting a massage, going to the spa, getting your hair done, just relaxing, um, doing things that can benefit you personally. These are 
the things that are actually going to help you guys somehow to make the changes that you need to make in regards to these friend groups, these social networks, these associations that you're a part of and the changes that are happening in regards to them this month focusing on yourself, sort of taking it easy and really mothering yourself and, you know, eating well and just generally, like I said, taking it easy, relaxing, caring for yourself. You guys, Cancers, you need to focus on you this with this new moon, with this month, with with this week, with this month, this is actually your time where you really need to be doing self-care and self-nurturing. And that is going to help you in all of these other aspects of your life that are being impacted by this T-square right now. And specifically in regards to these changes that are happening in the 11th house, in your friends groups, in your associations, in your networks, and also give you a boost in terms of helping you to achieve like some goals, some wishes, some dreams that you have going on right now. You guys really need to be putting your time, effort, and energy into self-care and taking care of you this month. So that is what I have for you cancers. If you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave me comments, and tune in for my astrological outlook of the day tomorrow. See you later cancers. Bye! Okay, Leos, now let's talk about you. So this is for Leo Ascendants. You guys have had Saturn retrograding in your seventh house. So we know that for you, Leos, it's those relationships, those partnerships that have been really like making you feel held back, restricted, stifled in some type of a way. And this is because... For Leos, Saturn is really asking you to redo the foundation of your partnerships, your relationships, and um, how those are impacting your life. Saturn really wants to give you an opportunity right now to redo the foundation of how you're making relationships, how you're making partnerships, and just generally the relationship and partnerships dynamics that you guys attract, create, manifest, and have going on. Saturn wants you to be, you know, Saturn is all about what we build. And it's like, sometimes we're trying to build a beautiful house for ourselves, but we end up building like a cage. And so Saturn is really asking us to redo the nature of what we've built in certain areas of our life so that we can be more free, liberated and authentic moving forward. And for you guys, this has definitely been in terms of relationships and partnerships. For Leos, you have also had Uranus transiting your 10th house. And so this means that you've been experiencing like major shakeups in careers with authority figures, um, just things, unexpected things coming out of the blue, strange happenings, having to do with your public image, your reputation, your career, how people are perceiving you publicly, and also, again, authority figures, your relationship to authority figures, and also your own inner authority, okay? You also had, um, because Uranus wants you to, br to bring you back into authenticity and your own personal power, basically, in regards to how you are, how your career is functioning. It really wants to make sure that your what you're doing publicly, your public contribution is al in alignment with your true authenticity and what you're meant to be doing in this life. So you guys have had Mars transiting your first house in Leo, and now we have Venus coming to conjunct Mars and Leo as well. So you guys are gonna be feeling quite passionate, inspired, and motivated in terms of just kind of getting out there and sort of like being the life of the party and just very um, personally motivated, personally inspired. You guys have a lot of charisma right now, a lot of magnetism, a lot of energy. Venus is transiting your first house, so you're looking good too. You're um, just very magnetic and attractive right now. And this is with Venus and Mars transiting your first house. Leos, you guys really are like the shining stars right now. And you're just really kind of feeling yourself and you're really just wanting to get out there and, you know, be seen. And um, the only thing that you really want to watch out for this cycle is that Venus is in square to Uranus. So there could be some relationship conflicts. Well, we know that you guys have that going on <laughs> anyways because of Saturn in your seventh. But there could be some relationship or financial conflicts that sort of come up in like a surprising way as a result of you just being out there, being so beautiful, being so magnetic, being so passionate, being so energized. This month you might get some haters, Leos. So just something to keep in mind. There might be some some type of relationship or partnership conflicts that arise as a result of just your personal beauty, your personal magnetism, and um, just the the enhanced personal magnetic 
vibrations that you're carrying this month with Venus and Mars transiting your first house. Now, for you guys, the new moon in Cancer is happening in your 12th house. So actually, Leos, even though, you know, you're probably really feeling like you really just want to be out there and be in the middle of things this month, Actually, what the new moon in Cancer is asking you to do is to meditate and to pray and to sort of like do inner self work and to be more isolated throughout the course of this month. Because with the new moon, the sun and the moon happening in your 12th house, um, they're really asking you to like mother your unconscious mind and um, like your dream world and your psychic abilities, your spiritual connection, your intuitive connection. And really take a lot of care and nurturing, put a lot of care and nurturing into these areas of your life. So it's kind of like a contradiction for Leos. It might be a little difficult for you guys, you know, and you are a fixed sign. And so you guys are probably having like quite a go of it, a go of it right now with all of these energetics happening in the fixed signs for you, um, Leo, really stifling making things impulsively emotional and passionate and also like really crazy in various areas of your life you guys are one of the signs that are being like hit the hardest by this but really with this new moon happening in your 12th house your answer to it all is to go inside is to really retreat into like your quiet place and be there and care for your really put a lot of care and nurturing into your spiritual connection, your ability to connect to your higher self, to gain insight and information and sort of navigate reality from a spiritual context, from a spiritual viewpoint. You can gain a lot of um, insight this month in terms of your ability to derive wisdom, connection, and understanding through your intuition and spiritual messages and spiritual connections that are coming through for you guys. So for Leos, you know, it's, you guys are in a very um, tense, chaotic period of time right now. And even though you are having all of this energy and all of this personal magnetism, all of this like highlight on your own personal presence, you're definitely going to get the most peace and the most benefit in terms of solving these problems in your life this month, Leos, by actually retreating, by actually separating yourself, removing yourself from all of the ongoings and really retreating into yourself, into your, like I said, your, more, your, your higher self, your spiritual connection and cultivating and nurturing this. This is what this cycle, Leos, is asking you guys to do right now. So... You know, while you're experiencing these difficulties or any difficulties that arise from, you know, like I said, that personal presence that you guys have right now, going to spirit is the answer for you. So that's what I have for you, Leos. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave me comments, and tune in tomorrow for my astrological outlook of the day. See you later, Leos! Okay, now let's talk about Virgos. So for you guys, Virgos, you have had Saturn retrograde transiting your sixth house. So this tells us that you guys have definitely been undergoing some type of frustration, something holding you back, something stifling you, something frustrating you in terms of what's been going on on your on a daily basis and in terms of your habits, your routines, your patterns, um, what you do day to day and um, Maybe just feeling like kind of frustrated or like depressed or just like your day-to-day day -day life is really heavy and weighing on you for some reason. And that is because Saturn is really trying to get you to make adjustments to the foundation of the way that you experience these daily experiences and your routines and your habits. And it wants you to make changes to your diet, to your lifestyle, to... Um, the supplements that you're taking to your exercise, how you're exercising, how you're caring for your physical body and how you basically how you're serving yourself and how you're serving others. Saturn wants to create and bring more fulfillment to your daily experience long term and really wants it to be ultimately a more like liberated and fulfilling area of your life. So that is the nature of why Saturn is creating these obstructions, these frustrations right now, because it wants you to reevaluate the foundation of how you're doing your day-to-day -day life. 
you've also had um, Uranus transiting your ninth house. So for you guys, Virgos, this has definitely been, you know, creating some type of awakening in terms of your higher understandings of the greater picture of things, your beliefs, your perception of reality, what you perceive to be true and real and, um, your just perception of truth generally has been going through some major shakeups. You may have had some really shocking revelations or, you know, a really strong awakening happening in terms of your overall understanding of the nature of reality for you guys with Uranus transiting your ninth house, trying to bring you in a, a general awakening in, in terms of your spiritual beliefs, your perceptions of truth and higher, non, higher knowledge, higher understanding, wisdom and reality. For you guys, you have also had Mars transiting your 12th house and now Venus is coming to conjunct Mars in your 12th house. So you guys, Virgos, actually might be feeling quite passionate, quite motivated and quite inspired to retreat, to take a vacation, to relax, to not worry about things, to sort of just like let it all go and and to sort of like evade, um, just like evade reality in some type of a way, just sort of wanting to merge back into your spiritual connection, really like really reunite with like your higher self and your intuition and, you know, wanting to meditate, wanting to pray and really just feeling very passionate and inspired about reigniting your connection to um, your unconscious mind into spirit and to God and to the universal source of spiritual connection for you guys, Virgos. This is actually kind of a really nice um, way that this is playing out for you in the ninth, the 12th, and the sixth house, trying to make you make changes basically to purify your vessel, purify your body so that you can receive this awakening in terms of higher understandings, higher truths, and then really um, cultivate and put energy and action into strengthening the spiritual connection that you have. That's sort of how these things are playing out for you. And with the new moon and cancer coming into your 11th house, actually, what you should be focusing on sort of nurturing, you know, embodying the mother archetype in regards to your friend groups, your associations, the organizations that you're a part of and, you know, where you sort of get your identity really taking care of putting care into putting energy into and just really nurturing these relationships that you have in these organizations, in these groups that you choose to be a part of, in these social networks, in these friend groups and these associations that are the people that you want to be a part of, that you want to, that you feel resonate with your identity, groups that you want to join or that you feel connected to somehow. This is where you need to be putting your energy and putting your focus. If you're involved in an organization, if you're involved in a nonprofit, if you're involved in some type of, you know, group that is serving the greater good of humanity somehow, this is where you guys should be focusing this month because this is ultimately going to help you in this process of awakening and um, reconnecting to spirit and source and being able to receive insight from that in order to have this awakening and to make these daily lifestyle changes, um, really focusing on you know, where you put your energy into serving the greater good, that is what is going to benefit you guys, Virgos, the most this month and where you should be focusing in order to sort of alleviate the pressure that's coming from this T-square that we have going on. So that is what I have for you guys, Virgo, for this week and for this new moon in Cancer moving into the Cancer cycle. If you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave me comments, and tune in tomorrow for my astrological outlook of the day. All right, now let's talk about Libras. Okay, hi Libras. So for you guys, you have had Saturn retrograding in your fifth house, and this has generally probably been bringing some kind of frustration, limitation, holding you back in your ability to have fun, to enjoy the party, to experience joy, to just feel free to authentically express yourself. You may have been experiencing some type of creative blocks in some type of way, or there could be something going on with your children that's sort of obstructing you from being able to experience the level of personal joy and personal freedom. And 
ability to just relax um, and play and enjoy life the way that you might want to. And this is because Saturn really wants you to be reconfiguring the baseline, the foundation of how you enjoy life, how you play, how you express yourself creatively, and where you get your ultimate fulfillment. Saturn really wants to create something for you guys long term into the future that is going to give you more personal satisfaction, more personal fulfillment, and more personal self-expression going forward into the future. So this is the area of life that is really um, being reworked and reconfigured for you guys right now. You've also had Uranus transiting your eighth house. This is definitely like a total rebirth in the psyche, in the subconscious mind, in the subconscious programming, really making throwing things up in the air, creating shakeups, creating issues in regards to um you know, joint finances or deep intertwined interpersonal relationships with other people and the nature of the deep and complex areas of our psyche that we don't really pay attention to, our subconscious mind, the things that we don't look at, the things that are hidden under the surface that are really the driving and motivating factors in terms of how we make deep interconnected intertwined relationships and, you know, the financial interconnections that come along with that. Uranus wants to bring you back into all authenticity in terms of how the deep inner nature and inner workings of your psyche are are operating and so you guys really are getting an awakening and a redo in terms of um the deep hidden like aspects of ourselves and the deep hidden aspects of the underlying driving forces that motivate external behavior and the relationships and the connections that we have with other people. So that is how the Saturn T square or the Saturn square Uranus has been um, playing out for you guys Libras. Now you also have had Mars transiting your 11th house and now you have Venus coming to conjunct Mars in your 11th house. So this is creating a lot of passion, passionate and inspired and like motivated energy in terms of associating with other people, in terms of connecting with groups, social networks, social organizations, um, and just really feeling really inspired to relate with other people and to associate with other people and to be a part of the ongoings, to be a part of, you know, the overall like body of activity, like the collective ongoings, really, really just wanting to sort of be out there and be a part of it all. You guys have been feeling very inspired and will be feeling very inspired throughout this new moon cycle to make new friend groups, to join new friend groups, to participate in different organizations. And um, also you might be like setting new goals, new intentions, new hopes, and new dreams for the future with Mars and Uranus or Mars and Venus transiting your 11th house. Um, just, yeah, motivated, inspired to make new goals for the future, to join new groups, to make new associations, to make new friends. This is where you're putting your energy this month. Um, and there also may be some conflicts that result because of the square from Uranus to Venus, Venus in your 11th house. There may also be some type of conflicts that result in relationships or in partnerships because of these new associations that you are trying to be a part of, because of these new organizations or these new groups or just your general motivation to be out and about and to be a part of all of the ongoings. There might be some type of conflict in relationships again or finances that come up as a result of that this month and that's just something to keep in mind but for you guys really Libras the new moon is transiting your 10th house so where you really should be putting your focus and your energy and your intention to sort of grow and nurture and take care of something this month that is going to benefit all of the other areas of your life being affected by this T-square, it's really in terms of your career, your public image, and your public reputation. So for you guys, Libras, there might be some new career opportunities coming into context this month, or you you really just want to be focused on your public contribution, your public energy or your public image, your reputation, doing things to improve, to care for, to nurture your public contribution, what you're giving back, how other people are perceiving you, and also your relationship with authority figures and with bosses. This is a really good time to nurture your connection and your relationship to your bosses, to the people that are authority figures in your life, and in turn, this 
this can positively affect your public reputation, your public image, your career generally, which also is going to, like I said, help in these restrictions that are going on and holding you back from experiencing joy and helping these big, this big awakening that you're having in terms of the deep inner workings of your psyche and how that is manifesting in terms of these complex intertwined relationships and financial issues that are going on with other people. And also, you know, in terms of this desire to connect with others, to make new friends, to join new groups, to have new experiences in terms of the type of people that you're associating with. Focusing on your your public image, your career, your relationships to authority figures and bosses is really going to benefit you this month, and that is really what you need to be mothering, nurturing, and caring for. Your career, your relationship to authority figures, and also your public reputation, your public career, or your public image. So that is what I have for you guys, Libras, for this week and for this month, the new moon cycle in Cancer. And so if you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel, leave me comments, and tune in tomorrow for my astrological outlook of the day. Bye Libra! Hi Scorpio! This video is for Ascendant in Scorpio, Sun, Moon, and Scorpio to a lesser extent. And so for you guys, Scorpio, you have had Saturn retrograding in your fourth house. This has been bringing limitations, frustrations, and things holding you back in regards to your family, your roots, your home, where you come from, place of origin, your mother or your personal mothering and parenting. Something in that area of life has been stifled holding you back and causing frustrations but it's because Saturn is really asking you to reform your baseline your relationship the foundation of your home environment of how you connect to your roots of your family environment of your relationship to your mother or your relationship to your own mothering your own parenting you guys have definitely been being asked to re reform the foundation of this so that it can create and provide a much more fulfilling experience for you that is more enduring and long lasting and stable going out into the future. You've also had Uranus transiting your seventh house and this has been bringing major shakeups in relationships of all kinds partnerships, business partnerships, contracts and agreements and of course romantic relationships as well. R with Uranus transiting your seventh house, something about your relationships and the way that you do relationships and the partnerships and the current relationships that you have right now is out of alignment with your own true personal authenticity. And Uranus is really trying to liberate you to be yourself in relationships and to have relationships that are much more suited to who you really are on the inside and to, tr to who you truly are, um, like authentically. Okay. So Changes that have been happening in terms of your personal relationships and those business relationships, partnerships, financial agreements, contracts, all of that type of stuff, definitely going through major upheavals because there's something about the way you've been doing it that is not authentic and it needs to be redone so that you can have a much more liberated opportunity to be yourself in these relationships. You've also had Mars transiting your 10th house and now Venus is coming to conjoin Mars in your 10th house. So you guys are actually going to be feeling quite passionate, inspired, and motivated in regards to your career, in regards to your public reputation, in regards to your public contribution, your public image. You guys got a lot of fire, a lot of magnetism, a lot of charisma, a lot of really good creative inspiration and ideas in terms of the direction of your career. You're putting a lot of energy into it right now and it's impacting you know, how people are viewing you publicly and your reputation, your image, and also your relation supporting your relationship with bosses and authority figures. However, there could also be some conflicts going on with bosses and authority figures or conflicts because of this public image that you're putting um, energy into this month as Venus, who rules relationships and partnerships, comes into square with Uranus. So there could be for you guys, Scorpio, some type of, you know, surprises or shocks or upheavals in terms of relationships as a result of the career um, success that you're having, or you could be experiencing conflicts in regards to bosses and authority figures as a result of the energy and the creative inspiration and the talent and the magnetism that you're having in your career for some for some reason or in regards to your public image or your public image could be causing some type of um, conflict in your um, in your relationships 
this new moon cycle this week throughout this month. So just something to keep in mind, uh, conflicts in relationships stemming somehow from either um, your relationship to authority figures or from like things that you're doing to improve your public image, energy that you're putting in, creative pursuits that you're putting into towards your career, your public image, your reputation, causing some type of conflict in relationships for you guys. Um, just something to keep in mind. Also, let's see, you have the new moon in Cancer and it is going to be occurring for you guys, Scorpios, in your ninth house. So this is saying that really what you guys need to be focusing on to sort of alleviate the pressure that you have on you this month, because again, Scorpio, this is another fixed sign. You guys are really one of the signs that are being very, very hit hard and activated through this fixed T-square that's gone on. But for you with the new moon and your ninth house, what you really need to be focusing on is gaining higher understandings, gaining wisdom, gaining knowledge, um, really connecting and trying to um, put energy into nurturing your understanding of reality, your, per your beliefs, and your perception of like truth and higher truths. And... You need to be nurturing, mothering, and caring for your overall understanding of things this month. The whole picture. What is your view of the whole picture? What do you believe? What What is the truth that's being presented to you right now? And, um, you know, putting energy and intention into gaining wisdom, gaining higher understandings, getting an overall bird's eye view of whatever's going on. And also, you know, this also could possibly have to do with, you know, long distance travel or people from other countries or, um, just gaining different insights, gaining different perspectives, gaining different under understandings that sort of help you piece together the overall picture of what's going on. This is going to help you guys, Scorpios, as you are navigating these family issues, these relationship issues, and whatever is going on with your career and your public image. Really striving for truth, for wisdom, and for a greater understanding and you know, for really like the higher truths of reality and the higher like principles of understanding and belief, these things are going to help you um, sort of have an awakening. You guys have an awakening coming with the new moon in the ninth house. This is an awakening month for you. And this new greater perspective and the wisdom that you gain this month is really going to help alleviate some of the pressure um, in terms of the family, the relationships, and the career situations, the public image situations that you guys have going on. So that's what I have for you guys, Scorpios. You're really going to want to put the nurturing into gaining greater knowledge and understanding this month and this cycle. So if you guys liked my video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends, and tune in tomorrow for my astrological outlook of the day. Bye, Scorpio. Hey guys, this is my video for Sagittarius, Sagittarius Ascendant, most specifically also to a lesser extent, Sun and Moon in Sagittarius. And you guys have been having Saturn transiting retrograde through your third house. So for Sagittarius, you guys, for some reason, you've been having a hard time gaining information or talking to people about what you've learned, or you've been having a hard time learning what you've been wanting to learn, or you've been having a hard time understanding things or being able to communicate the things that you've learned in a way that you want to, in a way that other people understand. Something about information, communication, learning, teaching, um, and talking to other people has been being stifled or restricted or held back in some type of way and has been causing you some type of frustrations. And this is because Saturn is really asking you to really work hard to learn the truth right now and to really clarify your perspective, to really gain new alternative viewpoints and to learn and to communicate in a, um, a way that is going to be more fulfilling to you going forward into the future. It wants you to 
you know, really reform the foundation of your relationship to information generally, to how you receive information, how you get information, how you communicate information, how you understand information, how you relate information to other people. Something about those things needs to be revised in order to actually liberate you to have a more um, holistic and fulfilling way of relating to communication, to information, to learning, and to teaching going forward into the future. You have also had Uranus transiting your sixth house. So this may have been bringing up some health issues. Um, and it also may have been creating like major shakeups and changes in just your daily life, your daily routine, your habits, what you do on a day to day basis, how you take care of yourself, how you serve yourself and how you serve others. And also, you know, your work, what you do on a daily basis for work. And, um, also could potentially be in terms of pets and stuff like that too because pets are ruled by the sixth house. So Uranus is trying to bring you back into some type of authenticity and align you with a higher path to make you healthier and happier in terms of your daily life experience. That's what Uranus is doing for you guys, Sagittarius, in the sixth house. Really wants you to have a more authentic experience and a more fulfilling and a more um, in alignment experience in terms of what you're doing every day and the routines and like I said your your diet your nutrition your supplements your workout routines um, and your lifestyle generally some type of lifestyle overhaul that you guys need to experience right now so that you can be more liberated to be authentically yourself generally in other areas of your life okay You've also had Mars transiting your ninth house, and now you have Venus coming to conjunct Mars in your ninth house. So for you guys, Sagittarius, you're probably going to be feeling quite inspired and motivated to, and, and very creative also to gain information, to gain wisdom, to have an awakening in terms of the overall understanding of things. Actually, for you guys, Sagittarius, this really might be a new moon cycle where you get a lot of awakening. You get a lot of new understandings about things. You kind of redefine your viewpoint and your beliefs and your the truths of reality really coming into a, into a new definition and letting go of a lot of past beliefs past ways of identifying with truth and past ways of perceiving like i said reality generally for you guys, Sagittarius, this is really being overhauled. And th we know this also because the south node is in your sign right now as well. So for you, Sagittarius, with a south node in your first house, you guys are really one of the signs going um, undergoing one of the greatest personal transformations right now in terms of what you're letting go of and really releasing from the past, moving on from transforming your beliefs and your ideas about yourself and about reality and gaining new greater viewpoints and understanding that are much more in alignment with the truth of things now and how they need to go going forward. And, you know, with Mars and Venus coming to a conjunction in your ninth house, this is really, you know, going to help you in this process of releasing the past, opening to the future through some type of spiritual awakening or gaining a greater viewpoint, gaining a higher understanding, gaining like a, a greater philosophical understanding of the nature of reality and really realigning your beliefs and what is true to you now and going forward in a way that um, is just much more appropriate and in alignment with who you are becoming and who you need to let go of being. So I really actually view for you, Sagittarius, this Venus-Mars conjunction happening in the ninth as something that is really going to trigger your ability to release what you need to let go of and to receive the new insights that you need to receive to help you with this process. Now for you, and again, this fits right into it too, you have the new moon that is occurring in your eighth house. So for you guys, Sagittarius, with the new moon in your eighth house, this cycle for you is really asking you to put a lot of effort and energy and mothering and nurturing and caring into taking care of clearing out your psyche, really addressing these like deep subconscious issues that keep you held in like self-sabotaging patterns of behavior that, you know, 
attract these relationships and these deep intertwined complex connections with other people that can like create like financial intertwinements and stuff like that, that really, um, are not serving you and are not benefiting you anymore. It really wants you to be doing a lot of self work for you guys. Sagittarius, this is the month. This is the cycle of self analysis for you guys. You guys are being like the psychic doctors this month and you really, um, should be kind of more isolating yourself and just really being very introspective and really nurturing and caring for the state of your psyche. Um, looking for your, looking at your shadow side issues. That's a big thing for you guys this month, diving into the shadow side, diving into the subconscious mind, diving into the psyche, figuring out where, you know, what, what the in complex inner nature, inner working of your psyche is and how it's translating into relationships that you gravitate towards and that you attract in your, you know, external physical life and these deep intertwined connections with other people that result from these like issues that we have going on in our subconscious mind in black moon issues. You guys are really being asked to, um, really clear out your psyche this month. And this is playing into everything else that's going on because you're releasing the past. You guys are really going through a tremendous personal transformation, letting go of everything that you thought you were so that you can bloom into something so much greater than you ever imagined. And, um, with this Mars Venus conjunction coming into the ninth, you are inspired to really learn and to gain new information. And for you guys, you know, learning about the psyche, learning about the subconscious mind and how that impacts the nature of our reality could be very inspiring for you guys and very healing for you guys this month. And again, you really want to mother and nurture your psyche, self analysis and Focusing, putting your attention on healing your psyche is going to benefit you, Sagittarius, tremendously this month, especially in this massive process of um, redoing your own personal vibration, releasing and opening to the new that's coming. This will help you guys a lot, Sagittarius, and this is what the universe is asking for you with this Cancer New Moon Cycle this month. So if you guys like my video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave me comments, and Tune in tomorrow for my astrological outlook of the day. Bye, Sag. Okay, now let's talk about Capricorn. So for you guys, Capricorn, you guys have had Saturn retrograding through your second house. So we know that for you guys, this has really been probably stifling your finances in some type of way, making you feel very frustrated, very held back in terms of projects that you're working on, in terms of things that you're trying to build and create, in terms of your financial security, your resources, material comforts. It's really because though Saturn wants you to reevaluate and reform the business baseline of how you're making your money, how you're providing for yourself, how you're creating these, um, these, these structures in the stability that, per, that creates financial abundance, creates comfort, creates, um, an ability for you to feel safe and secure in your life. And it's because, yeah, like I said, Saturn really wants you to reform and be more authentic about how you are making your money. And, it wants you to 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 reform this so that it can be more enduring, more long lasting, and ultimately more fulfilling going forward into the future. Saturn really wants the way that you're generating your income, the way that you're building and creating the foundations and the stability in your life to be something that is fulfilling to you into the long term. Okay. And you have also had Uranus transiting your fifth house. And so for you guys, Capricorns, Uranus in the fifth house has really been creating a lot of shocks and surprises and throwing things up in the air in terms of your ability to um, have fun and to experience joy and pleasure. And this may have also brought like some shocking and surprising things happening with your children potentially or with any type of creative pursuits that you've been engaged in or um, just generally your way of, ex like I said, experiencing joy, play, having fun. Um, Uranus in the fifth house is really trying to bring you back into personal authenticity in the way that you experience joy and fun and the way that you create in your life. Some type of a creative awakening, some type of awakening in terms of your creative potential or freeing your creative potential, liberating your creative potential somehow, or um, 
bringing you back into authentic alignment with your relationship to how you, like I said, how you experience joy and also your relationship with your children could be undergoing like fine, um, fundamental, like really crazy changes right now because Uranus wants to make those connections better, stronger, and more authentic. So that's kind of how the, this energy has been playing out for you with Uranus in the fifth house. Um, definitely throwing things up in terms of how you're experiencing fun and joy in life. You've also had Mars transiting your eighth house and now you have Venus coming to conjoin Mars in your eighth house. So you guys actually may be feeling quite motivated and inspired and passionate and have a lot of actually creative inspiration in terms of putting energy into making changes to your psyche, making changes to your subconscious mind or making changes um, or just putting energy into like these deep intertwined interconnections relation interconnected relationships that we have with other people and like the financial intertwinements that the joint finances and stuff that come about as a result of that um, for you guys with Mars and Venus transiting your eighth house um, some type of just motivation to address like things going on in your psyche or in these deep intertwined connections and relationships with other people or there might be you might be creating some type of deep intertwined connections with other people with Venus and Mars in the eighth house you might be getting into some type of like very deep and complex relationship as well but also something to keep in mind with Venus in the eighth house in square to um, Uranus in the fifth, there could be some type of relationship or financial conflict that comes about as a result of this energy that you're putting into these new, like, complex relationships or that you're putting into really self-examination and self-analysis of the psyche. Maybe, like, you are very... Um, inspired right now to sort of investigate your subconscious mind and you know the inner workings of your psyche and maybe this is creating some type of conflict in terms of your ability to experience joy experience fun or with your children or with your um personal creativity so just something to keep in mind there could be some type of conflict that comes up this week in terms of relationships or in terms of finances because of this like maybe you know you're supposed to go do something fun and you, you're, or you're supposed to go like do something like really spontaneous or you get invited to do something really spontaneous and fun, but you, you don't want to because you, you really want to be putting energy into this like self analysis, this introspection, and it creates some type of conflict. Something like that could occur for you guys. But really, for Capricorns, the new moon is happening in your seventh house. So where you are really going to want to be putting your care, nurturing, and sort of mothering over is in regards to your relationships and your partnerships. Really focusing on putting care, effort, energy, and, re and like nurturing and caring for relationships, romantic relationships, and also our partnerships, um, our financial obligations to other people, and also like any contracts or agreements that we have going on. For you guys with the new moon in the seventh house, really focusing and putting energy, like I said, and care and nurturing into those relationships, making those relationships a priority this month, and really just caring for them is going to help you somehow alleviate the pressure of these um like of this like creative situation that you have going on or this um this like tension between finances and wanting to have fun somehow putting energy into the relationships generally for you guys throughout this cancer new moon cycle is going to be beneficial to you in terms of alleviating the pressure that's going on in the other areas of your life. So this is what I have for you guys. Cancer, it's relationships that you want to take care of this month. And um, this should really generally help overall. So if you guys liked my video, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and leave me comments and tune in tomorrow for my astrological outlook of the day. Bye Capricorns. Hey Aquarius, this video is for Ascendants in Aquarius to a lesser extent Sun and Moon in Aquarius. And for you Aquarius, you have had Saturn retrograding through your first house. So 
all of the Aquarian Ascendants out there, there is something that has been stifling you or holding you back or frustrating you in terms of your personal um, presence, in terms of your personal ability to like express yourself, your personality, your um, presence in the world, or any desire you have to sort of like change your appearance, to like... Um, change the way that you are relating to other people or the way that your personal presence is represented in the world, undergoing some type of limitation, some type of frustration, something holding you back. And this is because Saturn is really asking you to um, really redefine the baseline, the foundation of who you are and how you express yourself. And you're, you're, your ideas and your views and your relationship to your own personal presence in the world and any changes that you are trying to make to your identity Saturn wants you to make sure that those are the proper changes that are bringing you that are going to bring you the most fulfillment going forward into the long term so for you guys Aquarius any identity that you have built for yourself that is out of alignment in any way with who you really need to be for the most fulfilling experience going long term into the future. Saturn is asking you to hold on, to hold back, and is creating frustrations for you in this ability to um, present yourself the way that you would like to because he wants it to be solid, enduring, and long term and fulfilling going into the future. Now, you also had Uranus transiting your fourth house. So this has been creating major shakeups, major changes, and surprises in regards to the family or the home or the hometown, the place of origin, your um, the community where you come from, your mother, your own mothering. Um, definitely surprises. Or also, for Aquarian descendants, you could also surprisingly become pregnant this uh, while Uranus is transiting your fourth house. This is um, a time for like surprise pregnancies as well with Uranus in the fourth house. So changes, shakeups regarding the home environment, the family, the mother, and just things very intimately that happen sort of like behind closed doors. And you've also had Mars transiting your seventh house. And now you have Venus transiting your seventh house. So for you guys, Aquarians, you're actually going to probably be feeling very motivated and inspired and like charismatic and magnetic in terms of relationships, creating new relationships, forming new relationships, the relationships that you have now, your partnerships, um, your like financial relationships and contracts and stuff like that. There is your, your, this is a good time for you guys to get in new relationships. This is a time to strengthen your current relationships and just relationships are the receptors of this like magnetism, this passion, this inspiration, this creative ability that you guys have going on throughout this new moon and cancer cycle. But actually, what you really need to be focusing on this month to sort of help take the pressure off and alleviate some of the issues that you have going on, especially in regards to these um, upheavals like in the family situation, is you're really going to want to be focusing on your day-to-day -day life, your habits, and your lifestyle. With the new moon in Cancer, this is falling in your sixth house, and this is asking you to really like take care of and nurture and mother and... Um, bring like some type of just care for the way that you're taking care of yourself. It wants you to care for your physical body. It wants you to improve your diet. It wants you to improve your lifestyle. It wants you to improve, you know, take better supplements, work out more, get more sleep, and just generally do a better job of taking care of yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. With the moon in, um, with the new moon happening in the sixth house and also take good care of your pets this cycle in this month. But generally, this has a lot to do with upgrading and just putting a lot of care, attention, and focus on your lifestyle, your routines, and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. This is the time to make improvements to your lifestyle. And for some, please stop Shiloh. And for some reason, by putting this care and this nurturing into your lifestyle, into your routines, into your daily habits, and really just caring for yourself more and bringing your daily habits and routines up to a higher level, this is actually going to do a lot, like I said, to alleviate the stress that you have going on in your home. And it's going to help you with these restrictions that are holding you back in terms of redefining yourself personally. And it's also, you know, 
it's also helping with, it's also doing things to bring these relationships to these inspired relationships into um, a better alignment as well. So for you guys with the new moon in the sixth house, Aquarius ascendance, definitely, definitely, definitely taking good self care of your habits, your lifestyle and what you're doing on a day to day basis is really going to help you guys this month. So that's where your focus needs to be. That's what you need to be caring for, nurturing and sort of mothering over yourself your lifestyle, your daily habits, and your day-to-day -day ongoings and behaviors. So that is what I have for you guys for this week for your new moon um, reading Aquarius. If you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave me comments, and tune in tomorrow for my astrological outlook of the day. See you guys later, Aquarius. Hey Pisces, this is your reading for the new moon in Cancer and the energetics of this week heading into the new moon in Cancer. And for you guys, Pisces, you have had Saturn retrograding through your 12th house. So this really has been asking you and holding you back, maybe making you feel like stifled in terms of your spiritual connection or your ability to... Um, feel supported by spirit and your faith in some type of way. You guys could be experiencing some type of like crisis in your spiritual connection or crisis in, or just feeling like, you know, abandoned by God or something at this point in time, or just frustrated in your ability to receive divine inspiration or frustrated through your process of meditation or prayer. You might be having difficulty sleeping right now as well, Pisces. And again, this is because Saturn is in your 12th house. And Really, the point of this is Saturn is asking you to reform the foundation of that spiritual connection, of how you receive this divine insight, of how you meditate, of how you pray, of how you um, you connect to your higher self. Saturn really wants you to reform the foundation of this area of your life so that you can create a much stronger more realistic and enduring spiritual connection that can benefit you long-term into the future and really be that stable support system for you going forward. So any crisis of faith that you're having right now or any difficulty in this spiritual connection, it's because Saturn wants to make it better, stronger, more enduring, and more long-lasting. So that is how Saturn has been playing out for you guys, Pisces. You've also had Uranus transiting your third house. So you guys may have been receiving quite a bit of crazy information lately. You may have been learning things completely out of the blue, completely unexpected, getting information that just shocks you like to the core and that you are learning things that are totally out of the blue and unexpected and you never would have believed or, you know, thought that could possibly be real except wait, here's the proof. And it's just, it is what it is. You guys have been getting very shocking and surprising information, communications, messages coming through, and you've been learning a lot of new things. You guys are really going through an informational awakening right now with Uranus transiting your third house. You also have had Mars transiting your sixth house, and now you have Venus in your sixth house as well. So you guys, this is actually a good placement for Mars and Venus right now, the way I see it. And um, you guys really ha are going to be feeling quite motivated and inspired and taking a lot of action in terms of what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and your lifestyle and your habits and your routines and how you care for yourself, how you serve yourself, your day-to-day -day work and other, and um, how you serve others. Okay. So you're going to, you guys are probably going to be having actually a lot of energy to make lifestyle improvements, lifestyle changes over this um, next new moon cycle. And you know, it's always a good thing when we take action to improve our health, to improve our day to day experience, to improve our lifestyle, to improve our diet, to have better routines, to have better habits. And this is all happening for you guys. And you have a lot of action and a lot of creative ideas. And you're actually feeling very inspired to take action right now to improve your lifestyle, your day to day routines. And, um, this is a very actually beneficial thing for you guys and it will help you long term. However, there may be some conflicts that arise for you in terms of these lifestyle changes that you're trying to make. They may, um, for some reason, cause like people to not say things like in relationships and in partnerships. They might trigger for some reason some type of like aggressive communications or people like saying things that aren't that nice to you or something, but don't let it bother you. This is just because you have Uranus um, in the third house of communications forming a square to Venus in the sixth house. So something about the 
energy that you're putting into changing your lifestyle might bring you some negative feedback or some negative communication in some type of a way. Or on the flip side, some of these, some of this information, some of these new ideas, new understandings, this awake informational awakening that you're having and that you're learning, these new things that you're learning, they actually may be what is inspiring these lifestyle changes. So it could kind of go either way. Or that you you might be receiving like a little bit of hate for this these lifestyle changes that you're being inspired and driven to make right now. Or on the flip side, some of these informations, these informational learning awakenings that you have, that might actually be like inspiring you to want to make these lifestyle changes. So it could kind of go either way, but just something to keep in mind. But really, you guys, Pisces, the new moon is coming into your fifth house. And this is this is beautiful, too, with the new moon happening in your fifth house. What you guys really need to be working on this month is having fun and being creative and experiencing joy and playing and just allowing yourself to experience your own personal creative self-expression engage in creative pursuits this month play you know draw paint sing dance um just hang out with friends do the things that bring you joy do the things that make your heart feel happy and free and um liberated to like let your heart sing this month pisces that's really what is going to benefit you actually the the most and especially in terms of this informational awakening that you're having and these messages that are coming to you and your new understandings and you know your whole way of viewing reality has probably been thrown upside down but really like this cycle is telling you you really just need to relax to enjoy life to have fun and to engage Engage in the activities that make your heart sing and bring you creative joy and make you feel, you know, ignite your passions and just really liberate you into your own creative self-expression, um, personal enthusiasm and allow you to shine, make your heart sing. That's what I keep thinking of. So really like your job this month, Pisces Ascendants, is to go out there to have fun and to have a good time. And for some reason, this process in and of itself of reconnecting with your inner child, reconnecting with the joy in your heart, this will alleviate the stresses and the issues that are going on in other aspects of your life. Um, especially, you know, in regards to these new things that you're learning, you you might, your mind might be kind of blown at this point in time and you really just need to process things this month and universe wants you to do that by just enjoying life. So your job Pisces for this new moon cycle is to be as carefree as possible, to be as in your heart space as possible and bringing that outwards and to truly just do be doing what you can to enjoy life and to free your heart. That is what the stars, the planets are asking of you this month, Pisces. So if you guys liked my video, please leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave me comments, and tune in tomorrow for my astrological outlook of the day. Bye, Pisces! So that was my video for all of the 12 signs for the new moon in Cancer and the week leading up to it. I hope I was able to provide you some information that can give you some clarity and some guidance going forward into this week and also into this new moon in Cancer cycle. And if you guys liked my video, please give me a thumbs up, leave me comments, share it with your friends if you think they would be interested. Please subscribe to my channel. I have a Facebook group, Aubrey Stars on Facebook, if you guys want to come over there. And again, just so you know, I have this video time stamped so if you want to go back and watch just look in the description box for your sign click on the sign and it will bring you right to the time when I start talking about your particular energetic so thank you guys again so much for watching and tune in tomorrow for my astrological update of the day see you later bye